Thanks for joining the garage. Today we've got a 2010 Xterra. It has a leaky pinion seal. So we're going to get that replaced so we can get this ride ready for winter season. Got the seal. Let's crawl under and get started. So when you make your parts purchases, you're going to need to pick up the oil seal. Uh, this particular part number matches this year of Xterra. I would imagine they're all about the same. Um, and then you're going to need about 83 ounces of 80W90 gear oil. To assist with this will be something to catch the oil, uh, something to wipe up your oil. You're going to need a screwdriver to hold the U-joint steady. You need a 27 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter Allen socket. You want a transfer pump, seal puller, you want a 13 millimeter wrench, as well as a 14 millimeter wrench, torque wrench, a mallet or dead blow hammer, and some pullers. I believe this project can be done on ramps, however today we're using a jack with jack stands. Before we begin, let's go ahead and get some stuff out of the way. We're going to remove the 10 millimeter fasteners that hold on this flimsy skid plate. Need to make sure we'll be able to refill this with oil when we're done with the project. So we're going to take the passenger side fill plug with a 10 millimeter Allen and we're going to make sure we're able to remove this. Okay, so that's the plug we're dealing with. All right, same 10 millimeter hex. This is the driver's side and this is the drain plug. Let's find out. Okay. It's pretty black looking. Alright, so at this point you're going to have cleaned your drain plug, got a new washer, or if you want reuse your old washer, put that back in. Uh, go easy on this. Your differential case is aluminum. Take your time getting started. Um, should be about 25 foot pounds. If in doubt, always stop short of your mark. Alright, so we've done a little bit of cleaning here. Uh, we've cleaned this up, got oil off of it so we can mark on it. Uh, we're going to place a mark. So it goes back on the same as we took it off. So there's some yellow paint from the factory. We don't really need to worry about it. There we go. Also this bolt head, you cannot fit a socket over it. We're going to have to grab the nut with some wrenches to pull that off. All right, so at this point, if you have the vehicle lifted up on jack stands, your front wheels will turn when you start wrenching on the drive shaft. So uh, if you're on ramps, the ramp should hold the front end still, but uh, I've just got a old screwdriver. We're gonna jam that in the U-joint. This is a 14 millimeter wrench. We've got on the socket or the nut. And we're going to increase our leverage. By putting in a 13 millimeter on top of that. And that's how we loosen those up. Go ahead and take all of them except for the last one. When you get to the last one, hold the drive shaft up with your other hand. Otherwise, this thing will fall, possibly hitting you in the face. Will it hang down? Okay. I guess it doesn't fall down very far. All right. So now we have access to this inner flange. All right. Inside there, there's a 27 millimeter nut. Um, we're going to try to use the impact gun to remove that because 
There's nothing holding these wheels stationary. So if that doesn't work, then we will lower the tires down to where they're touching the ground. So we'll see if the impact gun can zip that off. Yeah, looks like it got the job done. All right, so we need to pull this flange off. We've got some pullers. We're just gonna give it a go with the impact gun. All right, so you want to make sure you don't scratch this surface because that's what the uh, oil seal mates up to. But you should now have access to the seal as it sits in there. Looking in there at the bad seal, I see the problem on this one. It was the uh, tension spring. Get a view at it. That tension spring, the silver thing, it's popped out of the little groove that it's supposed to sit in, so it was not applying any tension on the flange that we just removed. But nevertheless, it's coming out anyway. So we're going to try to pry at it with the pry tool, see how far we can get with that. Yeah, I don't know what was going on here. This is the seal removed. This goes on the inside of the diff. This is on the outside. Everything sort of looks okay on the outside. But on the inside, there's uh, some carnage. And I don't think that was just today from removing the seal. So you see there's uh, absolutely nothing to hold on the compression spring. So... That was probably a big part of why I'm leaking everywhere. Clean up the inside of the casing and I've applied a thin film of some grease. That's that red stuff you see there. And we're ready now for the seal. You want to make sure that the, tent, the compression spring is seated properly where it needs to go. So these lips are going to face out you need to drive this in. So you want to make sure you drive it in nice and evenly. The push on it might just kind of stick for a little bit. Yeah, that'll just hold there temporarily. All right, so we have the new seal just resting there. We're gonna to need to press it in further. We need to press it in straight. Uh, we need to Drive that in without damaging this lip. So uh, if you have a large socket, it's probably gonna be like almost three inches in diameter. You could use that, or if you got a specific seal press kit, use your components from that. I don't have any of that. I'm actually gonna use the old trash seal to assist with a can. Seems to be about the same diameter. We'll experiment and see how this goes.
And that's what your pinion seal will look like when you've got it pressed in flush and even. So with the seal installed, go ahead and give a little wipe down to the lips of the seal and add some gear oil to those lips. So with the seal cleaned up, we're going to run some differential oil around the lips of that seal. And then on the companion flange, we've cleaned it and lubricated it with some oil as well. All right, and if you had been following the factory service manual properly, you would have marked the orientation of this with the splines. I did not, so we're just going to wing it. Throw it on there carefully. Don't mess up your new seal. For the next step, I've uh, put some blocks under the tires. We're still supported by jack stands, but we have a few hundred pounds of weight on each tire. Uh, so hopefully that should be enough resistance on the front wheels to where we can insert the nut and tighten it down to the torque specs listed on your screen. I believe the factory service manual says to not reuse this nut, but we're going to anyway. Turning tires. I'm gonna pause right there. All right, driver, can you do the brake stand? Thank you. And just hold that. There we got it. All right, driver, you're good. Thank you. So once you got the nut replaced, torque down, uh, go ahead and start re putting the drive shaft back on. Make sure your marks are going to line up and of course you want to take any uh, traction off the wheels you want your wheels to be free spinning for this next part so you can reach all the, the bolts so we'll go ahead and tighten these nuts once we've all got them snugged down by our fingers um, the factory service manual calls for 44 foot pounds of torque I don't have a torque wrench that fits that so we're just going to go by feel, and then after driving around, I'm going to recheck the tightness of them after a day or so. Okay. So we have our 80 W90 year oil. And we're going to fill this up. Okay, when the oil reaches the fill hole, it'll start dripping out. So at that point, you can stop pumping oil in. All right, with the differential filled, do a little wipe down. Grab your plug with the washer. Carefully thread that in. And we're going to do 25 foot-pounds of torque. Or until we feel uncomfortable. There we go. There's 25. All right, at this point, we'll just uh, put our guard back on and call it a day.